What's up, guys? Uh, this is Brett Kelly bringing you a game from the Vassal No Top 16 tournament playoffs. What's up, DEFCON? Uh, today we have Ryan Jamal running an Empire Squad against uh, David Mosley, who is running a Beast Flavor Merc Squad with some Brawlers as well, uh, with Maul, Shyla, Gamorian Guards as Brawlers, and then Nexu and Rancor as the Beasts. Um, it's a high health, very defensive list. And on the other side, it's more like a slow-paced uh, glass cannon -y list with the sentry droids providing a lot of firepower, but uh, not a ton of mobility. And uh, some re actually regular heavy stormtroopers supporting, which only have three speed, but they do have six uh, health, and they also have composite plating. Which is if defending, uh, if attack is, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on this, four or more spaces away you add a block. So some defensive bonuses on them. Of course the Gamorrean guards have an extra block if they are defending against a range attack, which is most of the attacks uh, coming from Ryan's list. So uh, the, the Gamorrean Guard should be able to survive for quite a bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're running shielded. Yep, shielded. So in my mind, that gives an advantage to the Gamorrean Guard lists because they're really good objective sitters. But it looks like David's playing pretty conservatively with his list. He started with initiative, so... That puts him at a pretty big disadvantage going from round one to two. So he doesn't want to put his guys up too aggressively. And you can see he's playing very conservatively with the bottom side of the map. You have a lot of flexibility to keep your guys completely hidden. Um, this Gamorrean guard here is a target for sentries. But Shyla, Maul, this Gamorrean guard, and the Nexu are all pretty safe. Although... Um, Ryan is pushing up, so he's probably going to be able to take out this Nexu at the start of round two. Um, so these two elite sentry droids are in a group. Excuse me. And we're going to have to watch out for them round two. Uh, let me try to get this chat up on the screen. I'm having some trouble with it. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, DEFCON's here weighing in on this matchup. He has some first-hand experience against David's list. Um, yeah, Nalhada is a pretty tough map for the massive figures just because it's very easy to spread out uh, and not let them get all their different shenanigans off on you, so... The Rancor does have reach, so he's got a little bit more flexibility than the Bantha as far as hitting guys that are spread out. But now, how to, it, it's just a hard map to maneuver your massive figures around. So uh, we'll see what he can do with the Rancor here. Some sh early shots coming out. Looks like this sentry is trying to take a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 range shot against this Gorian guard, and that's going to whiff. That was kind of um, one of those shots where you just, you might as well take the shot because, you know, it doesn't hurt your positioning to take it. Um, these sentries up here are going to be very hard for David to get to. Because he doesn't really have the range to match uh, Ryan's list. So he his strategy is probably going to be to keep his guys condensed and maybe push up the left side or the middle. But he's going to want to probably retreat with his Nexu and avoid these two sentries. Because there's not really any way he can contest them right now. 
the sentries, um, they're pretty fragile with only 8 health. For a 5 cost figure, that's not a ton of health, but... If Ryan plays smart, he should be able to keep them out of harm's way, and that's really going to be the key to this matchup is... Can David get to the sentries, and can Ryan protect the sentries? I think that's really the most crucial thing. So, and we'll see how that plays out. I, I really like Ryan's positioning right now. I mean, I'm usually not a proponent of spreading out, but against this melee list, you can kind of force them to go one way and then retreat. So... I kind of like that he's a little spread out right now. It doesn't look like any of his figures are in a lot of trouble. Shyla has enough movement to get to this uh, sentry here, but without the hunter card, she doesn't really have a chance of taking out a sentry in one go. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what David does with this Rancor here. I assume that at the beginning of the round, he put the Rancor in the trained mode which means he gets two black die on defense um, but he doesn't get brutality uh, really round one there's no reason to go for that brutality mode just because it's really hard to get it off round one um, so he could potentially uh, put his rancor out somewhere to protect his other guys um, but it's going to be pretty hard for him to leave it in a place that's safe. So it does look like he's just going to push up, get in a position where next round he can do some damage. Again, though, the, the figures he wants to get to are the sentries, and I don't think there's a clear way for him to do that. So he's probably just going to try to play it safe Maybe get a Brutality off round two against the blue regular heavy group in the middle. Uh, right here. Um, but yeah, the key for him with this uh, Rancor is keeping it as far away from the sentries as he can. Not necessarily far in distance, but just make it hard for the sentries to get to him uh, and you know without exposing themselves palp tempting the nexu which gives it a free damage token damage tokens on nexus are actually pretty decent because they do have bleed and cleave so getting damage through is really important you know if you whiff on an attack which is possible with red-green, although unlikely. But sometimes, you know, you'll roll the one damage side on the red and the one surge side. And you might not be able to get a damage through, which means you'll miss your bleed and your cleave too. So it's really important for those Nexus to get enough damage to get at least one through. Okay, so... Perry gets thrown out. I'm not sure why, because that's a wild defending, which means you can look at the dice results before you use it. Um, and I think it's probably a mistake to use it here, because the sentries do have pierce too, so that Perry is not doing anything. One, two. Th oh, but there's minus one surge, and he needs to use the surge for accuracy. So it's really only four damage minus two, so he doesn't get the pierce. So two damage going through. That's not so bad, but the problem is those sentries are going to get to go first next round. They're probably going to be able to take out that Nexu.
So the brawler cards that we're going to see are Perry we just saw. And I'm sure he's also running uh, uh, there's a card where you deal two damage and take two strain. Uh, it's not coming to me off the top of my head, but I'm sure he's running that one. He might be running Maul's card, which allows him to gain both focus and reach and cleave two in an attack instead of one or the other. Uh, Defcon, thanks. It's Grizzly Contest I was thinking of. With a Rancor, he's probably running Crush. Um, there have been some leader cards that give movements. Um, but he's not running any leaders, so... Not sure if we'll see that. There is hit and run has been popular in this tournament, so we'll probably see that one. Um, there are some beast cards that are probably in his list, like um, I think Ferocity is the one that lets you have a attack at the end of the round with a beast. So none of those coming out right now, though. None of his beasts are in range to attack. And it is the yellow sentries going first. This is going to be a pretty big swing if they can take out this elite Nexu. It's a pretty big deal. Unfortunately for David, he doesn't really have a great response. He really needs to try to get to this sentry here. So maybe he can pull him down with Shyla and uh, you know get the sentry into a position where all his figures can just go kill him um, so the next who is eliminated the other sentry is going to have to waste the activation probably um, he could go attack The Rancor, actually. Uh, so four isn't enough. They actually have eight health, so he's going to miss by one. Which means the other sentry has to attack to finish him off. And, in fact, it's not a guarantee. There is the chance of a dodge. Defcon with the intel here. Uh, David is running Survival Instincts, which gives your beasts... I think an extra evade end block um, for a round. You played at the beginning of the round. Pretty sure that's right. Um, so the other sentry's got to take this shot because if he lets this Nexu get an activation, that's just so much value. The Nexu could even retreat and just deny those six points. That's pretty decent value also. So this white die is really important, uh, but it's a block, uh, blank. So that Nexu falls. But it does use up the whole Elite Sentry activation, so that's a 10-point activation. I'm not sure what the right move is here for David. I think I would pull a Sentry down to force the Sentries to go next. Uh, but he might elect to go with the Rancor instead and try to deal some damage to these uh, heavy stormtroopers. I'm not sure if he chose trained or not at the beginning of this round. 
Let's just ask. So Shyla is going to go now. I think this is probably the right play. But again, he's got a lot of options, so it's not clear what exactly is right. So I would just pull this sentry down. So Shyla has five movement points. So she used two. Three, four, so she's got one left. There's not really a very safe spot to stash her, unfortunately. So it would be really good if she had hit and run, because then she could retreat back to where she was. But we'll see. I do like this because... It makes it so he has to activate the sentries next. I think it would have been better if he put Shyla like here instead, and so he could pull the sentry one more space, um, and you know block his retreat with the uh, difficult terrain. That would make it really hard for him to put the sentry in a safe spot. The only risk here is that the sentry is going to be able to multi-fire. So that's not really optimal for uh, David, but I think that positioning is more important than the multi-fire. Multi-fire is actually really bad against uh, Camorian cards because they get the built-in block. So it's basically minus two damage. David says he forgot to use his card, so I think maybe he has, there's a card where if you're attacking with a melee attack, you get to add two damage against ranged figures. I don't remember what that one's called, but I'm not sure if that's legal for this tournament. Maybe it is. I'm not sure. I could have swore I saw that at Worlds, but maybe not. I don't remember. Um, five damage is decent enough. I mean, there was no way he was going to kill that thing. If he can just survive till the end of this round and then be really aggressive at the end of the round, into round three, I think he'll be in an okay spot. I think his goal should be to get all his figures into aggressive positions by the end of the round and to control at least two generators. We'll see if he can accomplish that goal. David saying he blew his plan, which means he might be holding on to Grizzly Contest. Maybe he missed a way to do an extra damage and if he could have Grizzly Contested there, uh, to get that kill, man, he must be really kicking himself. So he also is in position. Yeah, death blow is what I was thinking. So it's possible he's holding on to both death blow and grizzly contest. So a little bit of um, misplay there from David. With the command cards. I think he had a misplay earlier with Perry, so uh, hopefully he can recover from those mistakes. He played 
parry during the rolling stage of the attack instead of the modifier stage, which really is a big disadvantage for him. So it was a mistake. This multi-fire is going to be pretty weak. Only three damage. Um, that's not terrible. It was it was a pretty good roll. It's just multi fire is not great against Camorian guards. And let's see what this other sentry can do. He's probably gonna try to push some damage onto the Rancor. We asked earlier if the Rancor was trained. And yes, it is trained. So two black die. Okay. So death blow is available in this tournament, so that's likely the card that David was saying he forgot to play. I can't think of any other cards that were legal that would be appropriate there, but I mean in this no top sixteen tournament there's a ton of command cards that I never see, so it's not like I memorized everyone's list. This sentry is actually pushing up really aggressively. Kind of surprising, actually, because the Rancor is going to be able to get its claws in there. Next round, if Shyla is still alive, she has a pretty decent way to go kill that left sentry. She could go uh, move up, whip somebody down. Uh, attack and cleave and then grizzly contest so I actually kind of really like where she's at we'll see if she's able to uh, do that and maybe David's not even holding on to grizzly contest but if he is that would be a big play uh, this roll coming in is four range uh, another yellow roll uh, that must have been a re-roll uh, not sure what that was. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, this is a charge shot, so it's going to get plus two range. One, two, three, four, five. So that that is enough range. So three damage isn't a lot. Shyla is kind of in trouble, but the Rancor can easily block her off. The heavies roll blue-red and have plus two accuracy and three speed, so if they want to do some damage to Shyla, their minimum accuracy is four, so... They can get in a spot that guarantees them a shot. But blue-red search for plus one is not super reliable without a reroll. And I don't think one set can kill her. So uh, I don't think David's in a rush to block her off yet, but he does have that option. Honestly, he could just pass here. He's only got three acts left. Um, actually he can't. It's 3x to 3x, so Maul's going to move up. And what is Maul going to do? 1, 2, 3, 4. So he does have reach. That's going to come in handy here because he can reach and cleave. So, uh, what is Maul's attack? Uh, 
How does cleave work with the Rancor? Can it reach cleave from any space of its figure? Or do you have an attacking space? No, it can reach from any space. There's no attacking or targeted space. I believe cleave is something like um, anything that could be the target of this attack and reaches anything that's within two spaces. So yeah, you can you can reach from any space and you can cleave any space within two of you. So he was holding on to death blow. Um, let's see, red, green, plus two. Uh, plus, well I guess it's plus three actually. And he has a surge for Pierce 3. So this has a pretty decent shot of getting the one shot. It is unfortunate that he wasn't able to use that on this sentry earlier. Although, unless he had a card to follow it up with, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, 3, 4, 5. He's going to be off by 1, actually. Um... So yeah, he's going to have to use his other surge for Stalk Prey, I think. Which gives him movement points and a power token. And the follow-up. He really wants this kill. It would really protect his Shyla to get more figures off the board. Mitigate coming out. That's going to be really important. He's going to reroll the yellow. And he gets the damage, so. A perfect roll there. Getting that damage, plus he gets the extra move points and a power token, so just a perfect roll. And he didn't have to use Grizzly Contest either, so. Honestly, I think Brawler and Beast is uh, a decent set of traits to have in this tournament since a lot of the Trooper and Hunter cards are banned. So I think David has put together a really decent list. Uh, of course, Palpatine and Sentries are very, very strong. I mean, those are both, in my opinion, top-tier units. Um... And there's not a lot of command card support for them without like Call of the Van Call of the Vanguard. Um I'm pretty sure Shared Experience is banned, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Targeting network is probably available, which is pretty decent with them. Uh, heavy Weapon's an interesting one. There's only really a couple worth running. And I'm pretty sure some are banned, like Collateral Damage is banned. I'm pretty sure Kenny was running that with his Dracata list. And there's one that gives you um, mitigation against dodge rolls. Lock one, it's called. That one's for sure available. I'm not sure if uh, Ryan's running it, though. That's true. Heavy Ordnance is positioning advantage, but you can only use it with heavy weapons. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it gave you an extra bonus against courier droids. I guess they're considered objects. Maul uses his extra movement points to retreat. I'm not sure if I would have retreated there because he's going to get shot at anyway. The sentries have already gone. And you want to put him in a spot where he can have an impact next round because, you know, as is, he can't, right, he can get to this blue sentry, but you want him 
in a spot where he's got options, I think. That's just my opinion. But, I mean, he is going to take some shots, so. Man, that's a good defensive roll with the three blocks. It's only going to be two damage going through. Actually, I only count I only count one damage there. So just one damage so really. I mean yeah, I don't know. I would have left Maul up a little bit. I mean, you never know how much damage he's going to take. But you're running a brawler melee list. You need to be the aggressor, I think. Then again, Ryan is just ceding control of these objectives. So... You know, with the pigs, this pig, honestly, could just run up, grab this generator, and be in position to attack and cleave. Although I'm not sure if you just want to leave a target for these sentries. Maybe a better play would be to move them to the left to support this attack. I think that's probably the better choice. Yeah, I agree, DEFCON. Let's bring this chat up to date um, when you're getting a initiative in a no top 16 tournament since it's a guarantee because there's no negation take initiative shenanigans you have to make that end of round, start of round, transition really worth it. So here comes the Rancor, and I assume he's going to be in some very aggressive spot. This is actually really good, because if he can take out this sentry, that would be huge. Plus, you can get a cleave off. Red, green, green is a very strong attack pool. This is probably going to be overkill, to be honest. Unfortunately, that evade blocks two damage on the... Uh, on the heavy. That's actually probably the worst result that uh, David could hope for. Because it's pretty much guaranteed to be dead. Uh, but he really wanted that extra two damage. But, you know, you take what you can get. It's a pretty important kill there. And I'm not sure how timing works on these games, but David's definitely going to be getting the point advantage here. He's got control of two generators right now. I'm pretty sure that Ryan doesn't want to contest them at all. And meanwhile, he still has a set of pigs left that can go grab the other two generators if he wants to. I'm not sure that's the right choice, but... Yeah, I agree with that. This, this Gamorrean Guard is kind of wasted on the terminal. That's another problem with the No Top 16 tournament is you don't get your, you know, R2 or Gideon or, you know, Imperial Officer or whoever usually sits on the terminal. There's There's no really good cheap figure that just gets left behind. Jawa, you know, none of those are legal, so.
having a four point figure as a terminal sitter is not good because usually four point figures are your primary damage source. So Palpatine's going to go ahead and activate. He might come down and force lightning the Rancor. But it is trained, so it's kind of a wasted attack getting a regular uh, heavy to attack it. Especially because he needs to attack it with the yellow one to not get the minus surge. Which means he needs to come down to the left one. He's actually tempting his own sentry. That is very interesting. To me, it seems like the right tempt target is Maul, because he already has a power token, so giving him an extra one isn't really a big deal. Yep, that's my thought as well. Um, usually tempting your own guy is... It's not worth it. It's just you're taking a damage to give a damage. Honestly, I don't think there's ever a reason to tempt your own guy. Unless it's like something that needs the power token to get a condition like stun through. But the sentries obviously don't need that. So, I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that tempt. Right. Tempt is like a targeted one damage, but if you're putting it on your own guy, you lose a little bit of control over where that one damage goes. Yeah, with motivation, you actually have a reason to tempt your own guys because you can heal them. But without it, it doesn't make sense to me. That weaken is actually really strong against the Rancor. Maybe it'll convince David not to train it or to train it next round. Generally, when it's in such an aggressive spot, you want to have it untrained so it can brutality. But since it's weakened, the brutality loses some value. Uh, and it is kind of the front line of defense. So maybe it wants the extra black die instead. It is going to be taking some attacks next round. The heavies that are up here just... It doesn't make sense for them to attack anything else, so. I don't know, I think I might leave the double black on it just to get a little bit more life out of it. So, Palpatine is going to have S1 attack Maul. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, so. Massive figures don't have their line of sight blocked by uh, by small figure so this sentry actually does have line of sight to the rancor 
but it is minus one surge, although the Rancor is weakened. So two black die here. It's only three. It's only three range, and it's not a focused shot. So he needs to use the surge for accuracy. I'm sorry, it's not a charged shot. You can't have Palpatine order a special action attack, so it's just a normal attack. So no extra, no extra range. He's gonna have to search for range or reroll. Rerolling's risky because he does have the minus one surge. So if he rerolls the yellow, for instance, and loses the surge, the attack just misses. So he's actually not gonna reroll. He's just gonna take one damage on the rancor. So. This Rancor still has a lot of life left in it. 12 health with two black die is a lot to chew through. This is another... Uh, okay, so this is an example of... Just think about the difference if Maul was in one of these spots versus back here. Because then next round he can move up take a focused attack against this sentry and then perhaps gain movement points to retreat to a little bit safer spot David is going to elect to just grab the generators so that's a little bit safe um, you know maybe a little too safe because these guys are kind of out of the fight and these sentries are just going to kill this one. Otherwise, these sentries wouldn't really have much to do. And Ryan's actually going to contest the generator instead of taking a shot. That's that's probably the right play. The other one's probably going to move up and take a shot. Yep. So, eight points going the way of David here. Set for stun. So, potentially stunning this Rancor. So, that means... Well, let's see if it goes through first. So no damage, actually. So so much for that. If he was stunned, I definitely think you leave him trained. Although, with Beast Tamer, it's not like he's going to have trouble getting into a spot for Brutality. So he's got a lot of options here at the start of the round. I think activating the Rancor first and killing this uh, heavy is probably, it's definitely an option. Another option is moving Maul up to cleave uh, the sentries or maybe activating the uh, Gamorrean guards first to get some value before this one gets lit up. The thing is, David shouldn't be in a rush because none of his main figures are vulnerable to dying right now. So if I was him, I would probably activate the Gamorrean guards first. Just because they're the ones most at risk of dying before they can do anything. Um, there, there is an argument for activating Maul first because he's not in position to do anything if the blue sentry activates. I mean, there are ways to get him in position. Namely, if you 
attack with the Rancor and then move back and land on Maul, you can push him up into a better spot. So he is keeping the Rancor trained, which means there's definitely no reason to activate the Rancor first. This Rancor is in no danger right now of dying. So. I think the two most obvious plays are activating Maul first or activating the Gamorrean Guards. But I think the Gamorrean Guards is just a little bit safer of a play. One, two, three, four. Unfortunately, he can't get them both in range of the sentry because he might actually have a chance of taking out the sentry if he had a way to get this second Gamorrean card in there. So he is going to activate the Rancor first. I think this is a mistake, to be honest. He's going to lose the weekend, but uh, it's going to get put right back on him. wonder who he's going to go for here. Probably going to play Crush, maybe? On... Yeah, he can just straight up kill that Heavy with Crush. Four damage on Palp isn't bad either. But he, he can't kill Palp. There's no way he can kill Palp with this attack. Even if... Let's see. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The most he can do is 7 damage, which isn't enough. Well, that's the roll he needed. That is as best as he could hope for. With Weakened. So that's going to be 4 damage. It's a pretty good attack. That does put Palpatine in a pretty awkward spot. With 8 damage. Because you don't want to leave him in in range of anybody really now. Guardian Stance comes out. I'm not sure who's playing it. Who is a Guardian? Are Sentries Guardians? Oh, they are actually. So, Guardian Stance comes out. He's going to have David reroll the red, which doesn't do anything, and the green, which doesn't do anything. Wow. <laughs> Unlucky there for Ryan, but what can you do? I probably would have rerolled all three, to be honest.
Yeah, I'm not sure why you would hold up on the last screen when that's the best result that he could have. I'm not, I don't really like that the Rancor is just stuck up there now and Palpatine can both attack, order, and lightning it. I, I don't think that David should have activated the Rancor so early in the round. I think that's a big mistake. Especially because he didn't kill Palp and nobody is in range to get to Palp, so what's the point? I mean, Palp is very safe there, and David's not going to get another shot at him until the next round. And he doesn't even get the first activation of the next round. So, yeah, moving that Rancor up was a very suspect play because he had no chance to kill Palpatine there, even with Crush. I'm not sure why he went for it. He should have just activated his Gamorrean guards, probably. Not only that, but the Rancor is now not controlling a generator. And it also doesn't get the minus one surge from the shielded bonus. So it's just in a way more vulnerable position there than it was. Yeah, that's very, very unlikely. Um, the yellow sentries are going to go and kill this Gamorrean guard before it can do anything useful. It's a pretty obvious play. The Gamorrean guard does have a chance to live because it is getting plus one block and minus one surge. It's got five health left, which is not a lot, but there's a chance. Um... Actually, the sentry can move up, so it, there isn't a minus one surge. Both can. But I definitely think this is the right play. Activate these sentries and kill the Gamorrean guard. Just makes it so there's one less useful figure. So yeah, attacking from there is not the right play. He should move up one. Um... But if he's going to use both attacks with the sentries anyway, I guess he feels comfortable that he can get the kill. The thing is, David is making this aggressive push the wrong round. You want to make the aggressive push when you're about to get initiative, not when your opponent is about to get initiative. Like, he should have made this push with Maul last round. And I foresee that he's going to push Maul up n with his next action, which is probably another mistake. Big rolls there from the sentry. Four, five, pierce two. Yeah, that's a big roll. And... Ryan's doing exactly what he should be doing, which is consolidating all his figures right on top of this Rancor. And if David comes in for a, for a brawl, I don't think it's going to go his way. He's got 24 points, which is decent, but... Man, going all in for Palp there was, was a huge mistake. Yeah, the Rancor is likely going to be dead at the uh, start of the next round. But it's actually going to go for um, Maul here, which maybe will convince David not to push Maul up. I don't know. If I'm David, I'd probably move Maul to the left and try to kill one of these uh, heavies.
Please during your activation. Everyone gets an evade. I'm not sure why uh why you would use that this round. I mean, it seems like it'd be way better next round, but... He's protecting Palp and the other sentry, but there's no way for David to get to those things. Man, another huge roll there from the sentry. Both of those surges are going to be canceled. But, four, five, six damage going through. Ouch. Um, actually, he's going to miss on range, I think. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. He doesn't have a surge to spend on range, so he's got to reroll. Probably reroll the uh, green one. To try to get the range. That has the best chance of getting him the range. Although rerolling the yellow has a higher damage potential. Yellow is... I need to look this up. He rerolled the green and got it, so... The green had a 5 out of 6 chance. Because the other um, one range sides have surges. And the yellow had a 2 out of 3 chance. So, if you wanted to land the shot, it's a higher probability for rerolling the green, so that was the right call. The yellow did have a little higher damage potential, but as far as max damage, but as far as average, you want to reroll the green there. Change of plans getting played. So the yellow group is going to be reactivated. That's a pretty big swing there. That's a whole extra activation. I might have even pushed them up to get the multi-fire shots off. Uh, I think you push Maul to the left here. Try to kill a heavy and also block yourself off from the sentries. I'm, I think that's like the obvious play. One, two, three, four, and attack this guy. I don't really see another option. Well, I mean, if they're going to activate again, it doesn't really matter if Shyla whips you, you just activate them next. And then you probably kill Shyla. I think him pushing Shyla up would be a huge mistake. In fact, if you can just kill Shyla and Maul, like, you can just ignore the Rancor and win the game.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure this game is going to swing now for Ryan. Like, with him getting initiative next round, I don't see how David can recover. I mean, Palp's just going to have such a huge activation. And Shyla actually is going to come up and whip this blue sentry, but... I mean, it's going to block Maul off, but it's going to leave Shyla completely exposed. I really actually don't like it. So three, four, five damage going through there. Pretty average attack there for Shyla. Five actually, I think, is a little bit higher than expected. And Shyla is just. If I'm Ryan, I'm really tempted to just ignore the Rancor and kill Shyla here. He's got so many options. And Pal Palpatine hasn't even gone yet. I mean he's not he's not pressured right now. He can just go with the yellow heavy and go attack Maul if he wants. And he's got so many options really. Maul has twelve health. So he's got five left. You can't really get five damage reliably from a regular heavy. Yeah, I don't know. He's he's not really in a rush. I think you might as well activate these yellow sentries and see how much damage you can do. Or or you could activate Palpatine and I mean Palpatine's activation is pretty obvious. You attack the Rancor, you lightning the Rancor, and you order a sentry to attack the Rancor. I mean maybe you just want to see how much damage you can get out from that. You also tempt um, Maul. I think Ryan has this game in the bag. He's just trying to figure out what's the safest way of locking it up. Shyla is getting the minus surge from being within two of the generator, so that's actually going to help a lot. But I don't think it's enough to keep her alive.
I don't know, black die with two minus surges is pretty good against green, yellow, green, green, yellow. Maul could go Force Lightning Shyla. He is going to go with the sentries. It's actually going to go straight for Maul. Which I don't think that's the right play because Maul gets to activate anyway. So you might as well make Maul come up to you. And with multi-fire, there's really no chance of getting this kill, I think. One, two, three, minus one, so two, plus one, three, three damage, so he didn't get the kill. Fact, he doesn't have range. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to surge for range. So, two damage. That's actually a big deal because that means Palpatine can't just tempt Maul to death. Uh, big rolls here, four minus two, so two damage. It looked big, but that evade plus the minus one for multifire is a pretty big deal. This one's going to multifire as well. And then they're just going to start the next round with the yellow sentries and multi-fire again on Shyla and the Rancor, so man, this is this is really bad news for David. His positioning this round has been very suspect. He's actually charged shotting. I guess he felt like the multi-fire against the Rancor wasn't going to do enough damage. So th three, that's only one damage. So yeah, that actually Shyla is very defensive with that evade and minus one surge. Uh, but I'm pretty sure she's toast next round, though. In fact, Palpatine can kill her with a Tempt and a Force Lightning, so he's probably just going to ignore the Rancor and do that. I mean, that seems like a pretty good play. Force Lightning Tempt for the kill against Shyla. I mean, that's basically David's second centerpiece next to the Rancor, so killing Shyla basically wraps this game up, I think. Especially because um, Palpatine can just activate again at the beginning of the next round uh, and maybe get the kill on the Rancor. 
Unfortunately, he doesn't have line of sight to Shyla from where he's at. So he does have to move. He can't attack. And there's no rush to activate Palp right now. I think with the heavies, you try to see what you can do first. I mean, these yellow, the yellow heavy can get a shot against either Maul or even Shyla. Rancor is trained, but Palp gets Pierce 3 automatic, so trained isn't really amazing. I think you probably move this yellow guy up and try to kill Shyla. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe you move the yellow guy up and try to kill Maul. Yeah, I think that's what you do. I was going to move in and kill this blue sentry. Or maybe he has a damage token. I mean, maybe I'll try to take a big attack against the. Uh, yeah. He's got to do seven. Red, yellow, green, plus one. Surge for Pierce three. He needs a big roll to do seven. Uh, it's really plus two, so he needs to do five with the dice. Which is doable for sure. I don't know the odds. Probably like... Probably like 40%. Um, Ryan is showing an evade. I'm not sure why, though. Oh, he gets the evade because of armed escort. I forgot about that. Oh, he didn't do a focused attack. He did a... Oh, man, he didn't do a focused attack. Um, What's the point in cleaving two if you're not going to get the kill? Do you have Grizzly? He does. So he does get the kill there. So, yeah, that makes sense then. And then you got to take this as cards. Otherwise, Maul just gets tempted to death, which would be awful. But with Maul and Shyla next to each other, Palpatine can uh, Lightning, Shyla, which would put Maul at... 10. So he, Palpatine can guarantee the k kill on both of these guys right now. Because he can just order a sentry to attack either one. He lightnings Shyla. He tempts Shyla to death. And then next round he lightnings Maul and he, Maul's dead. So, man, that's rough. That is, and he also is controlling one generator. So at the end of the round, he's going to be at 18 from the generator, plus another 15 from killing Shyla and Maul. So 33. And then he just avoids the Rancor and sits on three generators and he wins. Yeah, that, that Grizzly play against Palp though is just so risky and there's no reason 
to go for it because the Rancor wasn't in danger of getting killed. So you might as well activate the figures that were in danger of getting killed, which are the Gamorrean Guards. In the meantime, you can let Ryan come to you since you aren't positioned super aggressively. He's actually just going to take this generator. Dang, big roll there. One, two, three, four damage. Oh, actually just three because the built-in block. He should have, um, with this yellow dude, just gone one, two, three, and shot at Maul. It would have the same effect if he got any damage through. Then Palp could just kill Maul to deny the generator. Plus, he would be controlling this generator. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. Ryan is just going to find a way to kill both these figures before they can activate next round. He he has to kill Maul uh, this round because otherwise Maul gets an activation next round. I mean, he doesn't have to, but... David's probably waiting with his Gamorrean to move on to this third generator. I think his only chance is to make a rush for points. I don't think it's likely, but he can get to 33. If he finds a way to kill another sentry, that puts him at 38. And then if he can park his Rancor on this generator and uh, have him survive, that would put him at over 40, so that's his path to victory. Or he could have Pummel um, with the Gamorrean card, which would be another big play. I mean, if you have Pummel, though, you probably are going to save it for the Rancor. If if he had Pummel, he would have played it already. There's, there's no way he's holding on to Pummel. He is actually just going to go for this attack. He can get to the generator and have an attack, so this is good. Two reds against a black die. Technically, he could get the kill, but very unlikely. <laughs> That's not going to do it. He does get a reroll. Uh, he accidentally rerolled both. You can only reroll one. Man, if he could reroll into that, that would be the kill right there. Oh, actually, they don't have search for damage. I forgot. I thought they had search for plus two. They don't. It's a, a search for a cleave, so it's actually only going to be uh, two damage. I 
And the Gamorrean guards would be so much better if they had Surge for plus two. It makes such a big difference. Okay, Tempt Shyla. Lightning on Shyla is incoming, I'm sure. And then he can just move up one. Oh. Oh, that is actually huge, because now he can still attack the Rancor. Dang. So Advanced Warren coming out to give him a free movement point, which allows him to get the Lightning and an attack off. Plus, he can get a... He splashes a damage on the Maul, and he can have a Sentry attack. And this doesn't get the minus one surge, so all he has to do is two damage, which is pretty likely. So two, three, pierce two. So yeah, that, that'll do it. Four pierce two is three damage. That puts Ryan up at, he just got 15 points. He's showing 29, 29, 29. And the Emperor gets an attack. Plus the Emperor gets the first activation next round as well. Yeah, D David's window to win this game is very slim. I don't think the Rancor can survive two Palpatine attacks, a Lightning, and a Sentry attack. Because that's what it's going to take. This is four Pierce three for three damage. So Palpatine can guarantee four damage with Lightning and Tempt. That would put it at 11. And then with an attack and a sentry attack, he needs to do five more, which is it's pretty, pretty easy to do. A sentry plus a Palp attack for a five. And he gets 12 from objectives. I think that's actually just game. So he doesn't even have to kill the Rancor. He just took it. Man, what a rough ending there for David. That's the power of initiative, though. You really have to take advantage when you're about to get it. And I don't think David did enough to take advantage of his... Round two to three transition. So good game there. Well played by both guys. Uh, I think Ryan's positioning was much stronger than David's. Um, David is commenting that the sentries do have an advantage on now Hutta, which is true. Uh, he really had to be more in control of the objectives. I mean, he was in pretty decent control of them, but that pushing the Rancor up there and then pushing Shyla and Maul up as well was really a big mistake. He sacrificed, basically he sacrificed all three of his main figures for a single elite sentry. 
I'm pretty sure that's all he got out of that, isn't it? Uh, I don't think he killed anything else. I, I guess he killed two sentries. So yeah, he pushed all three of those up for a full set of sentries. But that's still trading basically 25 points worth of figures for 10 points worth of figures. So that, that was a pretty big swing. Man. Ryan sitting on maximum firepower and inspiring speech. Pretty huge. Maximum firepower he could have easily used there on the uh to kill the Rancor. But I mean he didn't need to, so Anyway, that's all for me for tonight. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I appreciate it. And uh, you all have a good night. Take care.